Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Art 195, um, 3D modeling for animation uh, for the spring semester 2022. Today, what I'd like to do is to continue with where we left off um, before spring break, which was um, working with the multiply tab under the multiply tab and uh, various ways of adding geometry. Um, we covered the bevel and the chamfer is very similar to bevel. The rounder tool, which I said was really, really um, a useful tool and important. Extrude and lathe. And lathe is, you know, for spinning things around, taking two dimensional objects and turning them into three dimensional forms. The same with extrude. The lathe is also used to create the corkscrew kind of effect or, you know, spring like things. Um, we talked about smooth shift, smooth scale, again, is kind of a variation of that, very similar. Thicken is another one that we covered. Um, the mirror tool. Um, clone is similar. What I want to start with today is the array tool. That can be really useful to, to in, um, in specific in, uh, instances. So, what I have here at the moment, just a simple cube. And if I select the array tool, you can see that it goes, I have it set to the default settings here. And it can work really, really nice. It's good for, you know, especially for architectural models or um, abstract sculptures and things like that, um, where you take an individual object and you can multiply it along the X, Y, or Z axis um, and um, in infinite numbers. And it doesn't have to be an individual object. It can be kind of a group of objects. And you can clone those. In fact, that would be a use for the clone tool. So right now I have a three, one, and three count. Let me change it to um, along the Y axis here and see if I can't. I don't want 13, I want three. And I gotta make sure, oh, my doggy's bothering me. So, hold on here. Bagel, yeah, I know, I know you want attention, but you gotta sit. Um, so along the Y axis, I need um, to offset that to a bit. And you, now you can see, let me zoom out. You have a nice array from, you know, perfectly aligned with one another. Um, so that works really nice. Now you're not restricted to um, uh, rectangular, but you can also work with radial. So you'll notice that it's spinning on itself and it's centered. So what I need to do is move the center of the, the array over like so. So working with this little widget. And you can see that I have a radial count of eight. That was the default. The axis is the Y. You can make it the Z or the X. Doesn't really matter. Um, but again, it's a, a nice way of <coughs> taking um, an individual object and multiplying it um, so that what you get in the end is um, a very accurate, um, again, multiple, you know, ac accurate um, image of it multiplied. So um, that works really nice too. So in, in, in the, uh, in the instance of buildings, if you had, you know, array of columns, like maybe you were going to build a Parthenon or something like that, and you wanted to make sure that all the columns were in alignment, <clears throat> um, then this would be a useful way to do that. Okay, so that's um, again the array tool. Now, <clears throat> the next one that I want to cover um, for series. Let me undo this. Let me um, zoom in here a little bit. <clears throat> um, the next one that I wanted to cover is the knife tool. 
Um, the knife tool is used a lot and is very important. Um, so to use it, you just simply, and, and well, to understand too, when you use the knife tool, you cut all the way through the object. That's the only way you can use it. You can't do it a partial cut. So if I click and I drag across, like, whoops, I didn't want to do that. Let me do select. I need to select the knife tool first. That would be helpful. And I click and I drag. It doesn't have to be vertical. It can be at an angle, like so. And then I can right click again and make another cut across. So now you can see <clears throat> that I have two cuts across here. And if I hit the tab key, it doesn't like it anymore. So that's another consideration that you have to make. That I've lost that four and three pointed polygon um, <clears throat> number that you need to use sub patches. But if I wanted, you know, to go ahead and uh, I was working with a, a mechanical kind of object and I was going to use a Boolean modeling, which we'll get to later today. Or if I wanted to extrude in one piece, that would be, you know, one side of it, that would be work as well too. So if I undo a couple of times, get rid of the knife tool. Um, again, if I do it again, but I just, just divide it right in half, for example, or <clears throat> go off to the side a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the tool. Okay, now again, it doesn't work because notice that we have, let's go ahead and hit the top. Well, this one does work. It was because I had it at an angle. This one works okay. Okay, so I've hit the tab cool, tool. But if you hit it at an angle and you wind up with polygons that exceed the three point or four point limit, then it's not going to work very well. So you need to be careful when you use the knife tool. Notice that it cut all the way through. Okay. So if you <clears throat> later when we start watching the videos on building ahead, you'll see that the knife tool is used <clears throat> along with um, bevel and smooth shift, just different ways of adding geometry. <clears throat> um, some more appropriate at times than others. So that's the knife tool. Whoops, let me undo again. Um, a slice tool. Slice tool is if I click here and I go across, I can go at any angle I want. It's very similar to the knife, but notice that it only cuts on that one side. So now if I select the top polygon, and this is where it might work for us, but let's say I just wanted to take this top polygon and I wanted to bevel it. So now if I hit B for bevel, click, and then hit T for move, and let's move it up. Well, let's even move it at an angle. Again, it's a, uh, a nice way of building geometry. Okie doke. It doesn't have to be, um, it's still geometric, <clears throat> but um, let me go ahead and deselect. Um, T for move, deselect. Now let's hit the tab key again to see what we get. Yeah, it does. I've got an error because I went over. No, that's not what I want. So as I said, be careful when you're using some of these tools. Okay. So <clears throat> let me undo that. Go back a couple of times to the cube. I'll go ahead and A to fit all. Yeah, just um, more often than not in the multiply tab, just different ways of, of, of just adding geometry so that you can build your model and add complexity to it. Uh, we've already used subdivide. And again, if nothing is selected, then everything is selected. So if I select subdivide, um, you can use metaform, smooth, or faceted. I'm just going to use faceted, and I click OK. Notice that it just cut everything in half. 
So instead of six polygons, I have now four times six is 24. Okay. <clears throat> now this does work if I hit because it's done uniformly and I have a series of four pointed polys. If I hit the tab key, notice that instead of the, the really round blob by adding that geometry to it, um, it's very similar to the way we were building the head for the reboot character that um, <clears throat> it stiffens it up a little bit. Okay, so one of the things that you can do with this, and it's done all the time, is um, let me go ahead and undo that again. And I'm going to use the knife tool again. Um, we can, another tool that we can use that I'll show you in a, uh, uh, shortly will be um, uh, to use the Bandsaw Pro. But what if I were to go ahead and use the, the knife tool here? Let's go ahead and cut that across. And then I'm going to do another one down here. So I'm just going to right click and turn off the knife tool. And this should work now. Now, if I go ahead and I hit tab, notice that it's almost like a cylinder now instead of a round blob. And if I were to take <clears throat> these edges, so let's go ahead and select the edge tool. And I want to stiffen up the top even more. I could go ahead and I could select a couple of those edges and then make sure that I go to select loop. So the whole thing is selected, the whole row. And now if I move that up, I hit T for move, move it up. Notice how it stiffens up the top here. Now, I don't like seeing those facets. So that's something that we would have to work with. Okay, but now you get, it's not a sharp crisp edge, but you get one that's slightly rounded. Okay. Let's undo that, undo that. And let's come back, let's use another one. So that was talking about subdivide. Triple is if you want to turn everything into three-pointed polygons. Uh, again, if I click on that, notice how it took, excuse me, all the four-pointed pointed polygons and subdivided them into three-pointed polygons. Um, that sometimes is useful if um, you want to uh, um, either soften it or add the geometry so we can bend it or distort it in some way is again one of the ways that I showed you a while ago with the reboot character. That would be one thing that we could do. Um, <clears throat> so I showed you connect. No, I didn't. Um, I showed you the knife tool. I showed you the slice tool. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. Let's go ahead and go back to the slice tool and show you. Now, if I click here, no, I do select that. Let's, I want to make sure that I have um, polygons selected. All right, well, let's select the slice tool. Now, if I click here, the, I can go in any direction that I want to slice it. Okay, it doesn't have to be vertical. That was what I showed you, and it will slice the polygon in half. So let's undo that. And instead of that, let's try connect. Connect is a little bit different. Oh, come on, come on. You have, in order to use connect, you have to select edges. So now I do need to go back to edges. And let's select again the top edge here. And I'm going to hold down the shift key and select this edge over here. <clears throat> select um, slice tool and I can click here and I can click across here. So there, there are variations on one another, very similar. Okay. Um, let's go back again. Um, let's undo 
go ahead and select edges. That was a slice tool. I blew it. I meant to do that again. I want to select connect. And by clicking on that with the two edges selected, come on. There we go. See how it just connected it, and it divided it in half. Um, but in order to use the connect tool, you need to um, have edges selected. So again, if I select an edge here and I hold down the shift key and I select an edge here, then I use the connect tool and it just cuts it right in half. Okay. So again, another way of subdividing, another way of adding geometry. And again, each time, if you plan on using organic modeling and you want to, um, <clears throat> you plan on using sub patches, um, meta nerves, you know, then test it when you're done. Notice it doesn't like that because we have polygons that exceed the four point limit. So now you just get weird, weird things. So we can't do that that way. That would work instead if we had cut all the way through, <clears throat> then um, we'd be better off. So again, it works in some situations, especially when you're working with um, machined pieces and later when we use a Boolean and that sort of thing, modeling, then that works really pretty nice. Um, cut, divide, let's see more, fracture. Uh, some of these are just used rarely. Um, we've used the make pole tool. Um, that takes circular objects. So for example, if I were to take, um, let's go back over here to another layer and I'm gonna go ahead and create <clears throat> um, a, a disc like so. Okay. And if I wanted to, that would become a cylinder. Done. So if I go ahead now and I select the polygon, let's zoom in a little bit so we can see. And it's an end gone because there's 24 four points that, that define it. What we need to do now is that if you want to subdivide it <clears throat> into equal pieces like a pizza pie, then what you would do is you, under um, multiply, Okay, under more, if I say make pole, notice that it subdivides it. So that can be useful too, especially if you plan on using sub patches or meta nerves, and you don't want to get that error message uh, when you have an end gone left over. Um, and you need to, because um, sub patches or meta nerves only work with um, uh, three and four pointed polys. And that's it. Okay, so I'm gonna undo that. And I'm gonna deselect, let's go ahead and undo that. And let's go back to our cube. So <clears throat> that's pretty much what I wanted to show you um, over here in the multiply tab. And I encourage you to experiment with some more, you know, with more of them, but I think these are the ones that you'll use more often than not. Um, so let me go ahead and let's go to construct. And <clears throat> what I, the other thing that I wanted to cover today, and then that will probably be it for today, is um, using um, bo the Boolean tool. So um, one of the things that you, you, you're going to want to do, especially when you're going to create machine pieces, rather than work organi organically and build um, geometry using uh, bevels and uh, <coughs> um, shoot, what do I say? Bevel, the bevel tool and the, um, the smooth shift tool that you're going to want to combine them together. So let's go ahead in, in more machined kind of way. So 
to do that, we're going to go to the construct tab in order to, but to do that, you need two separate pieces. So let's go ahead and um, go back to create and I'm going to put this one on a separate level layer. And I'm going to put that one in the background so I can see what I'm building here. <clears throat> and what I want to do is I want to, I'm going to use a sphere as an example. And um, let's go ahead and build the ball. Let me go ahead and go ahead and reset. So I have a sphere. Let's move it outward like so. Yeah, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller just for the heck of it. <clears throat> so by holding down the control key, I can do that. So for some of you, I know that the, um, the toy is due on Wednesday. But one of the things that you can do, let's move this to the front like so. so you can see what's going on. There we go. So I have two overlapping shapes. Let's go ahead and <clears throat> deselect the ball. And now what I can do is I can, I have a number of options available to me that I can use the ball or the cube as a cutter. So to do that with, um, you need the objects, one in the foreground and one in the background. The one in the background is does become the cutter. Now the advantage to using Boolean as opposed to speed Boolean is that if you plan on using this sphere later, it remains intact on the, the separate layer. So to do that, I can come over here to construct and let's select Boolean. The default setting is, is to subtract, so let's go ahead and do that first. And notice what happened. It cuts it away. Really nice, very precise. But um, there is a little gotcha here that these two halves or these two, like this half, this semi half sphere and the cube are not joined together. And how I know that is if I go ahead and I select the polygon tool and select one of the polygons on the cube and I come over to my select tool or select options and I say select connected. Notice that the, the part that was cut out is not connected. They're not one object at the moment. They're separate entities. So what you need to do <clears throat> um, is you need to merge. So as soon as you use one of the Boolean options, make sure that you remember to select M for merge. Just use automatic merge points, okay? Notice that it says 44 points have been eliminated. Now watch what happens when I select one of the polygons and I say select connected. Everything is selected now. It is one object, not two separate entities that, you know, share, share some of the same geometry. So that's something that you have to remember to do. You have to hit M for merge. Okay. Okie doke. So that is one of the Boolean options. So let's undo a couple of those. Let's deselect. And I'm going to undo. And let's put this one in the background again. And now what if you wanted to join these two together? You wanted a, a bulge, you know, 
this semi this bubble to be connected to the cube. Um, we could either have the um, in this particular instance, it doesn't matter um, which is in the foreground and which is in the background. So now what I can do is I can use Boolean again. And instead of subtracting, let's go ahead and select union. And union and add are a little bit different. And I'll show you the difference. So now when I do that, notice that when I just select that one layer, the the sphere on the inside disappears. Now it's still on its own layer over here. As I said, when you use Boolean, um, that separate layer still exists. It doesn't go away. But as I said before, one of the things that you have to do that um, to make sure that they are intact and that it is one object is that you have to merge. So if I select one polygon again and I say select um, connected, notice that this that half or semi sphere semi yeah sphere is not selected. So I have to hit M to do you know for merge to do that. So I'm going to undo. So that's one of the options. Now, instead of using, doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select add this time. And you'll see the difference. Then instead of cutting away the part that overlaps, it in fact, um, it does merge the two together or connect the two, but it leaves the interior one intact. So let's try Boolean again. And this time I'm going to use add. Okay. Click OK. And now let's make sure that I just have that one layer selected. And you'll notice that the, the part of the sphere that overlaps is remains part of our, our object here. Okay. They are connected as one, but let's say this is a ball bearing or something inside an object. And you wanted to make sure that they were connected but um, the interior shape remained. And that's what happens there. So that's a slight difference between um, add and, um, and the last one that we use. So we go back again. Um, I don't want to use speed boolean. Well, I'll show you speed boolean in a minute though. Um, hold on here. Yeah, Boolean isn't available to me until I select the separate layer. So I'm going to go ahead and, and show you one more and where it says intersect. So I'm going to move this over a little bit. make sure that they're overlapped that's all and now again this would be an instance where it doesn't matter which one is overlapped or which one is in the foreground or the background subtract is probably the most important one to determine uh, the end geometry but now when i select boolean again okay and i select intersect what will happen is that it will take wherever the, the objects overlap, and that will be what remains. Okay. Now, where it does become significant is to which one is in the background, is that th that's the, the object that will remain. Maybe not the best example. There are other ways that you could have built this. But just to show you what it does, it's a way of cutting through things, and it does cut all the way through. Okay. So <clears throat> those are the Boolean functions. The next one that I wanted to cover are the speed Booleans. Um, speed Booleans, they have to be on the same layer as one another is yeah one another so let me um let me go back again there we go 
So I'm going to take this one that's in the background and I'm going to copy it. And now I'm going to paste it on the foreground so that they clearly overlap. Okie doke. So now what I can do is if I select speed Boolean, you have to decide which one is going to be the cutter. And that's going to be the one that's selected. So if I select the sphere, and I have polygons selected. So if I select a couple of, oops, I didn't want to move it. Let's turn off move. So if I have a few polygons selected and I say select connected. And now with speed Boolean, okay, I can either um, click here and it gives me the same options as I had before. Union, subtract, intersect or add. Okay, so I'm gonna cancel escape and it also gives you those options here so if i want to add these two together i can if i want intersect as i had before i can or if i want to subtract i can so just as i had with a regular boolean function but watch what happens whichever is the cutter or the one that's selected is the one that will disappear it's gone forever from um, your file so now if I select subtract, it's gone. The only reason I still have the sphere is because I kept a copy of it on a separate layer. But in fact, what has happened now <clears throat> is that it's cut it away um, and it disappeared that the one that was selected and became the cutter just disappears and is permanently gone. Okay. So that's speed Boolean. The only difference between Boolean cutting and speed Boolean is that with Boolean, the objects have to be on separate layers. Speed Boolean, they're on the same layer, but the one that is going to be the cutter has to be the one that is selected with the polygons. And that's it. Okay. Um, another neat tool is the bridge tool. So let me show you that as well. Let me undo this. And I'm gonna to go to another layer here. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and create a couple of spheres. And let's move it over here like so. And I'm going to move it up. And I'm going to make a copy of it just by right clicking and dragging down like so. Okay, so they're on the same layer. <clears throat> but what I want to do is I want to basically join these two together. So let's go ahead and turn off the tool. So I have them intact here. Um, before I do, though, to make things a little bit simpler, probably what I should do <clears throat> is a little bit of um, work here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, with points selected, Actually, polygons. I want polygons selected. I'm going to right click around this group of polys and delete. <clears throat> Just expand X so that they're gone. I'm going to do the same with the top one. Right click and drag around here. <clears throat> and Command X or Control X to cut. And now I'll switch to points. And I'm going to right click and drag around that group because I want to make sure that I have to join them together um, by creating a polygon. So with all these points selected, if I hit P for poly, that's now a single polygon on top instead of all the multiple polys on the bottom. I'm going to do that with the, <clears throat> the top one as, as well. 
So let's right click and drag. Select all of those. Now hit P for poly. And there we go. So I have two spheres. I've cut away little pieces of them. And what I want to do is I want to take, and with polys selected, I'm going to select that poly on the, from the top, from that, you know, the bottom of the top, hold down the shift key and select this one. And then what I want to do is when I go to construct, the construct tab, I'm going to select um, bridge. And notice that it connects the two together. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and deselect. And if we look at this from here, it's a way of connecting the two. If you want to create little dumbbells, and this will still work, I hit the tab key. Notice that I get this really kind of cool um, shape now. And if I were to move the two together um, a little bit closer, I get something that's, you know, more of an organic approach to connecting these two. So that's what that one does, kind of uh, bridge. Okie doke. Now, there's also in the, the Boolean range here is that we have, um, let's see, they're grayed out because we don't have um, two-dimensional shapes. And this is the drill tool. So let's go ahead and show you that one next. Um, I'll go back to my first layer, which is a cube. And let's say I wanted to poke a hole through the cube. Well, I, <clears throat> depends on what kind of hole you want to poke, but let's just call it a round hole. So I'm going to go to a separate layer because this is a Boolean function. And I'm going to put that one in the background so I can see what I'm doing here. And then from the side view, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create Uh, a disc doesn't have to be a disc it can be any shape you want I'll just make a nice big one like so and I'm going to move it in front let's move it in front of our object here or behind it technically okay so I'm going to use that disc to cut a hole all the way through the object. And that's something that you have to realize you can do. That it will, in fact, um, that when you do use the drill functions, they go all the way through, right? just not on the surface. So I'm going to go ahead and um, let's put the disk in the background and the cube in the foreground. Like so. And now I have under the, um, the construct tab, I have the drill tool available to me. Now, when you do that, when you use a drill tool, it can only go along the X, Y, or Z axis. <clears throat> and you have these four options available to you to core it, to um, tunnel it, to stencil it, or to slice it. So now what I do, if I select that I want to core it, notice it's what's left is just the nothing. So it didn't work for me. Actually, if I zoom around here, or move around, let's move this around. Yeah, nothing. So some in some instances the things won't work the way that you would plan them so let's try again i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to use the drill tool again 
but this time I'm going to use tunnel. Oh, I know why it didn't work. Never mind. Remember I said along the X, Y, or Z axis? Well, the X is the one that's selected by default. I needed to use the Z axis. So now when I click, and there you go. What's left are just two circles on either side of that cube. That wouldn't be a wise way of, you know, of using that tool. Let's try again though. Let's try a different one. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the drill tool again. This way I'm going to use, this time I'm going to use tunnel. And now what I can do is I can go ahead and I can click OK, and now it pokes a hole all the way through. Now again, you have, it, it, this works really well because it is a Boolean function when you're doing something that's precise and machined. But if we decide later on that we want to hit, you know, hit the tab key, um, it doesn't work. Uh, let me go ahead and turn that off. I don't want to turn off move. Let's go to modify, turn off move. There we go. Now I hit the tab key. Um, and I'm going to get an error message because, again, we have polygons that exceed the four point limit. So it's not working for us that way. Okay. So it works for some things, some things it does not. The stencil is one of the ones that I like the best. <clears throat> that um, for that it could be used for your um, your your toy um, or your final project, but let's say you you have um, let's go ahead and um, I'm going to do this again to show you what happens here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let's say I want to stencil on the front and the back um, an image of a star. So let's go ahead and I'm going to create a little star over here. And put the cube in the background so I can see what I'm doing. So let's go ahead and under the create tab, I'm going to go ahead and use a ball again. And I'm going to click and drag, hold down the control key so it's perfectly spherical. Um, I'm going to reduce the number of sides to eight. That's all I need. Let's turn that off. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select every other point. So let's select not the polygons, but the points. Now I'm going to resize it, Shift H, and bring it in. So and I got a little star shape. Okay, let's turn off size and deselect. And now I need to move it out. So I'm going to hit T for move, and move it outward here in front of our cube. And this time I'm going to use the stencil and watch what it does. So it's like placing a, a permanent decal on the, on the side of our object. Um, and we can make turn it into a separate um, surface if we wish. It works really nice. So for, for toys, if you're putting little star shapes on on balls or whatever, it works really nice, you know, for a child's ball. Then you have different configurations of things that you want to apply to the surface, um, but you don't want to um, have to use um, a projection map to do that, then this would be the way to do it. So um, let's go ahead and let's under, again, construct. I'm going to use um, drill again, but this time I'm going to use stencil. I click OK. And now you can see 
that it is on both. So let's go ahead and go back to, whoops, I didn't want to do that. Let me undo that. I have the wrong, I have to make sure that the um, cube is in the foreground. The star is in the background. There we go. Let's try again. So let's go back again and let's use um, drill. And I want it along the z-axis and I want it to be stencil. Um, slice does something very similar, but we can go ahead and use stencil. And notice that that star is immediately applied to that surface. Now, I can go ahead and I can apply a texture to this. So let's go ahead and click texture. And we don't have one yet. Let's go ahead and I could use an image map or I can just use a separate color. Um, let me go ahead and cancel. Let's apply it. My computer's slowing down a bit now. Come on. Okie doke. So now let's go back and just views, view the cube itself. We don't need to see the background. And you can see the star is configured on there, but it's also on the back. And they are permanently permanent parts of the geometry. So now if I switch to polygon, and I select the polygon, I can hit Q and I can make this a separate surface and I'll just name it star. And we'll make it a nice bright red star. Just to show you what I'm doing here. There you go. So <clears throat> some more Boolean functions. This is the drill tool. Now notice that because I only selected that one um, polygon, I changed the color of it. That doesn't automatically change the other one. But the geometry has been changed um, on the other side. So that's something to remember. OK, but if I were to render this now, it would only show the polygon, um, you know, the red on the one side, not on the other. Okay. Um, now that's <clears throat> using um, the the drill tool. If we use a solid drill tool, that's a little bit different. Um, we're not restricted to the X, Y, or Z axes. Um, so let me do that one, and then that will be it for today. Okay. So. Um, let me go ahead and I have, here's the star shape here. And on a brand new, let's see, on a brand new layer, I'm going to make a sphere. Okay, so let's go ahead here, go to create. Let's make the ball. And I'm just going to go back with a numeric requester and action. I'm going to reset so that it's a nice sphere. Okay. And let's turn that off. So now I have the same options to me as I did with drill, but with solid drill, <clears throat> I can move this in any direction that I want. So let me go back to the star shape. And let me, I'm going to, let's go ahead and um, let's move it around a little bit. So I'm going to move it over. Um, T to move. Come on. Put 
doesn't want to move. Why aren't you moving? Well, I'm not having much luck at the moment. At the moment, um, let's turn move off. Let's try and hit T again for move. And let's move it over. No, it doesn't want to move. So again, my my computer is being maxed out again. System is using fifty percent. I have my um. Activity monitor up now, see what's going on. I still have 34% of my computer idle. Um, the application is only using 14%, but the system is using the broadcast to you and to do everything is using over 50% of my computer here. So um, <clears throat> in a nutshell, I might have to do this for you on Wednesday, at the beginning, but when you're using the solid drill, it allows you to do the same functions as the, um, the, the drill tool, but you can manipulate it from any angle you want. So maybe if I were to take this one, um, yeah, let me try again. Let's hit T for move. There we go. Okay. And let's put the sphere in the background so I can see what I'm doing here. And let's rotate it so I can go Y and rotate it like so. Let's make sure that it's pointing it at the sphere. Okay, so now let's go ahead and um, put the sphere in the foreground, put the star in the background. There we go. Now I'm off at a separate angle. And now let's try under construct. Let's try solid drill now. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use um, tunnel again. Let's see if I get the same results. Oh no, because, okay, I had to turn the star into a solid. My mistake. Um, let's go ahead and do that again then. So what I can do is I can extrude the, um, the star. Let's try it that way and see if that works for us. So let me go back to the star. And let's use the extrude tool under multiply. And let's go ahead and go across like so. Okay, now let's try that. Let's use, because I have two solid shapes. So this is basically just another Boolean function. There you go. So that's you can see that the star shape is going pretty much all the way through. And now let's try it again. Let's go ahead. Even though it's not coming out the other end, it probably will anyway. So let's go to construct. And again, let's use solid drill and select tunnel. There you go. But now when I spin around to the other side, notice that it didn't go all the way through. So it's basically a Boolean function. I don't really understand the difference um, between Boolean and using solid drill. They really have the same effect. But the one advantage that you do have to this is what if I wanted, again, to, um, <clears throat> let's undo this, um, use solid drill again. What if I wanted to apply um, a stencil of that star onto the, onto the ball? Well, I could do that. And there it is. Okay. So now I can come back in here 
and let's just select the sphere and zoom in a little bit. And let's select the polygons that we have here. I'm just clicking and dragging. Hold on. Now if I hit um, Q, let's use the same red color. Come on. There we go. So now that star shape is permanently, it's a part of the geometry of our ball. So this is going to be really nice. The only downside to this is that um, <clears throat> uh, if you wish to move the star, um, it's really difficult because it's part of the, the, the entire geometry. However, um, one of the things that you can do with this that you couldn't do with a, well, you could if you use a displacement map. But what I can do with this now is that I can go back to multiply and I can use smooth shift. And I can click like so. Now I can hit T for move. And I can pull this out. Okay. And that you can't do with, it's harder to do with um, um, the uh, using just traditional maps. Okay, so that's it for today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing unless you guys have any questions. And I will stop the recording of this.